From the outside, Hoko life looks like an Animal Crossing knockoff. You've got your animal villagers, they live in a town, you build more houses to invite them in, collect resources, go fishing, catch bugs, it's clearly Animal Crossing. Or is it? When you first start Hoko life, you find yourself on a train to a new town. I literally thought a knockoff rover was gonna appear at this point, but it just cut to us getting off the train. No weird cat to make small dog this time. You're then tasked with introducing yourself to villagers, collecting resources for your houses, and cleaning up your town. All while running around like this. I, I can't unsee it. And after the few hours I've thrown into this game, it's still all I see. Like every other life sim and farm sim game, you catch bugs, fish, farm, everything. These aren't Animal Crossing only mechanics. If anything, everyone was copying the Harvest Moon series. These activities have naturally appeared in every similarly styled game now. Even Animal Crossing added farming. These are tasks we've come to expect in a game rather than them being exclusive. Imagine if Hoko Life didn't have fishing, it would seem like an overlooked opportunity. We've got trees and flower planting, both done in what feels like their own way. Trees are a coveted resource at the beginning of Hoko Life. The first few minutes of the game is just gathering wood. You'll need a bunch. Hoko Life definitely seems to rely more on resource gathering rather than hanging out with your villagers. At least at first, anyway. Maybe late game, after you have a full stash of resources, this will be what the game becomes, but right now I'm spending most of my time chopping down and replanting trees. Like Animal Crossing, you'll get a house that you can decorate, and your original villagers have predetermined house decor. But this game had villager house decoration mechanics before a 2.0 update. Thank you, Hoko Life. You can decorate these houses however you want, and even use them as your own storage. There are additional houses for you to decorate rather than just something that comes the way it comes and you have to deal with it. Like Animal Crossing, it seems like your maps and villagers are randomly generated, or at least picked from a pool of multiple choices. This way everyone's town feels a bit different. Though after watching Nintentalk stream to see how different everything was between saves, the first few villagers were the same, they just appeared in a different order. Which kind of makes me think that it's a pool of villagers, like how in New Horizons you're guaranteed a jock and sisterly for your first villagers, so you'll probably end up with the same neighbors as someone else. Looking at the trailer, there seems to be a large variety of animals to call your neighbors, so I don't think it's from a lack of NPCs. That's all the similarities between Animal Crossing and Hoka Life, but what are some differences? The first huge new mechanic that you're introduced to is building your own furniture. Sure, you have the ability to craft predetermined items like every other game on the face of the earth, but Hoka Life goes above and beyond. You can literally make whatever furniture you want. This game starts you off with a sleeping bag futon item, but I've got a house now, and I want a nice bed. Instead of waiting for it to show up in the tiny store day after day when the stock refreshes, I'm just gonna make my own. You can talk to Sally here and use your in-game money to buy packs of furniture pieces. Simple shapes like squares, circles, spheres, and then some designy items like flowers and leaves. After collecting all the resources I needed like wood planks and fabric, I got to work on a bed. And I literally made my own bed. Mattress, pillows, bed frame, legs, and why the heck not at a side table? There are so many customization options, I was completely blown away. You can also add color to the different pieces, but I didn't have enough resources to do this, so I just stuck with the default wood and white. But I think this came out pretty good. I'm dumb and didn't realize that I can't use a table because the game thinks that the whole thing is a bed, but oh well, I still like it. This is when the game really stops feeling like Animal Crossing and becomes its own idea. Besides the huge mechanics, there are little things that set this game apart. Like if you click at the right time when reeling in a fish, you'll unlock a treasure chest that has a nice bonus for you, if you're successful at catching the fish, of course. One of the other mechanics I like about Hoko Life is the exploration. You don't really get this feeling in Animal Crossing at all. Sure, you have your mystery islands, but once you've been to a few of them, there's really no need to explore anymore. You know exactly what you're getting into. Even Tarantula Island doesn't really do it for me, but unlocking stairs so that I could get to the second level of my town and find this entrance to a whole new area was exciting. I came into this game completely blind, and I didn't expect an entire area up here. There's a mine, a whole new fishing area, these boulders that I think lead to a different forest where I can get different wood, but I have to go through these mayor merits and complete some quests before I can unlock the explosives to get rid of the rocks. I really like these goals. They're similar to Nook Mile goals, but instead of getting another currency that you just use for something, you progress in the game. You get upgraded pickaxes to proceed further into the mine, unlock new mechanics like sprinting, and get some bonuses. 
These add a lot to the game and make my days feel less useless. You unlock stuff by playing the game rather than just waiting around aimlessly for days to pass. One mechanic you unlock is the ability to take the train out to the city. The city allows you to share your furniture designs with the world as well as view what others have done. Polka Life runs a furniture designing event. There's usually a theme involved and winners get their designs displayed to the world. This person literally made a switch. And this person made an entire game setup that's about the size of my house. The stuff you can do in this game is absolutely incredible. I'm unexpectedly having a great time with this game, and I'm only at the beginning. I haven't unlocked farming yet, or a lot of the areas shown off in the ads I'm sure you've seen all over YouTube. There seems to be a ton of stuff to check out once the game really gets going. At times, it does feel like cheap Animal Crossing, especially at the beginning. But if you play a bit, you start to enjoy the gameplay, the art style grows on you, and the surprises around every corner are just such a treat. And the days don't pass without you. It has more of a Stardew-esque time cycle. Except you don't pass out. I stayed up all night and nothing happened. You can just keep playing. Sleeping seems to only pass the time, which is helpful when you're trying to collect more resources. But these huge eyes convert their own energy, apparently. No need for sleep. If you started playing Hoka Life, what's your favorite mechanic so far? Let everyone know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Bye!